My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, or I should say this afternoon. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, well, my name is Deborah, and I am in Raleigh, North Carolina. So it's, are you in the same time zone? It's 440 here. Is it? Uh, no, it's about right now 142. So, oh, yeah, you're I'm, on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, we're in a, we're on the other side of Mississippi. Unlike you guys, we pay twice as much for everything. You guys pay the regular price. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, I got some questions for you. Yeah. How do you go from fitness to mindset coaching? How do you do that? Okay, well, I'm on my journey doing that. Um, it was funny right before I was talking to you. Um, so I've been a fitness instructor. I was an athlete my entire life. And, um, and I, I solved a lot of problems by exercising, you know, stress, a lot of things are exercise is great for stress. However, what I've, in my spiritual journey, which has got, gotten bigger and bigger every year, I'd say getting into Reiki, I don't know if we've chatted about that. Um, I've kind of learned that exercise doesn't solve everything. <laughs> and as you know, and um, so exercise is great. It's great for stress. It's laundry list of, of, of bonuses to, to uh, exercise. But I'm realizing mentally, if we're not dealing with our problems mentally, you can exercise all you want, but your problems are still going to be there. So um, you mean you could have a six pack and it still have problems? Yeah, well, <laughs> very few. <laughs> but, but absolutely, absolutely. I thought that solved all the problems. <laughs> well, you know what's funny, and I know that you're joking, but there are people that think that. They think, oh, if I only lose this amount of weight, or if I only run this marathon, if I only do this, then all my world's problems will be solved. And that's not true. There, there's, there's a host, there's a lot of people that they do that. They get the six pack and they're like, hmm, I'm still not happy. And, and I just I have found that through my teaching yoga cycle, whatever, a personal training that I've always really dealt with the mind. I just didn't realize that I was doing it. And now it started to fascinate me with um, learning like NLP and getting deeper into meditation and, and, and really focusing on myself. Um, my, my life is starting to change faster and faster. So I mean, they I did the whole, stu they did the whole entire study where, you know, they had people imagine that they were practicing and the same muscles fired as if you were exercising. So yes. definitely mind over matter and mind over body. Like there, I understood that fitness, gym, all of that is good for health, but you might need other things for your mental health. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that they, they need to have a, they need to correct and adjust and upgrade their mental health also too. So what does that have to do with entrepreneurs? So if I tell you I got five hours a day and you came and you carved out 30 minutes of that and that was dedicated to my exercise and mental health, how would you divide it? Would you do 20 minutes body, workout, all of that, 10 minutes mental? How would you divide it based on your experience that you got so far? It really depends on the individual. It really, really does. Um, I mean, if you really only had 30 minutes in a day, um, I would, this could be every, every day because I really think that you need at least 30 minutes of both. Um, but okay. if you had a, a day that you're in a time crunch, I would say, um, 10 minutes of exercise, honestly, in 20 minutes of mindset, whether that's meditation, positive affirmations, um, you know, auto suggestions or, or, um, but I think not, I think I know, and I'm learning more and more that what, what our life is about, what is really happening in our life, it, it all happens between here and here. And if we don't start paying attention to what's happening in our mind, um, the mind controls the body, the mind drives the body to the gym. And so whatever you learn in your mental, you know, whatever you're telling yourself over and over and over, you're going to do, you're either going to talk yourself out of going in the gym or talk yourself out of stopping smoking or whatever the, the habit that you're trying to create. And Deborah, um, I got to tell you, I'm very good at talking myself out of the gym. I'm telling you, <laughs> I am one convincing son of a, like I am good at that. If there was, if I was going to sell that you. as a product, 
Like, I'm telling you, I got some good scripts for that. Like, I got the best lines, the most convincing uh, debates that I've ever done in my life was over that topic. So I don't get me started on that. If anybody life. wants training, I could do a training on that. You, you are going to be, I'm going to be all over that. I'm going to get you, I'm going to whip you into shape. <laughs> but but it's, it's not just, I think making excuses is the first stage of it. But I think as an individual, when you do more self-development, even if you're giving excuse, knowing that you're giving that as an excuse is yeah. more important than what you're doing or what you're not doing. Because a lot of people are giving excuses in their lives and they haven't got to the self-awareness or the enlightenment stage where I know I'm giving the excuse. Yeah, Knowing that to me is very, very important. Being conscious about it, very important because there was a time in my life where I did give those excuses yeah. and I didn't know there were excuses. I did, I thought aware. that was Right? Yeah, you, so, you didn't have that awareness. Awareness is everything. Exactly. That's so, where so your that's, journey starts. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a different you know stage and everything else. But I don't know. I have to do a little test with my group. I got to see if they're in shape. Can I mint if I'm mentally more healthier than them? Can I outrun them? <laughs> my my willpower. You've been practice starting 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 your mind, like you said, Doctor <laughs> Doctor Joe Dispenza. I'm not if that, sure if that's who you were referring to. You can. They have just studies that your biceps can grow if you're if you not just you can't just sit here and wish for it. You have to be really dialed in. It's way deeper than that. Um, Definitely. But but you can practice. When I was um you know playing basketball, I would practice at night before I went to sleep. I would practice free throws. I would and and it they have found that it sh it you sh you get just as much gains when you practice something that you're already doing for the most part. Um, but then they've, all, they've also taken with NLP people that have never played piano before. Um, they somehow programmed them. People that never touched a piano sat down and could play like Mozart. So the brain well, is I, just I, really fascinating. So if you can give us one or two advice to somebody younger than you. I mean, you look like you're 21. So what <laughs> advice would you give to someone who's like 18 and they're trying to become an entrepreneur? Well, I have a 19-year-old and an almost 16-year-old. So. That's your sister. That's not your daughter. We're not, we're not going to talk. There's no way at age 21 you'll have no way. <laughs> I'm not buying it. But okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm way, way older than that. Um, so I, I would I have a lot to say. I mean, if you have all day. But um, if, if I have to narrow it down to a few things, um, I would say do not be afraid to fail. Um, in failure, to me, it's, it's, it's just a negative word for an opportunity to learn. Um, because if you think about, we wouldn't have the light bulb, we wouldn't have the airplane, we wouldn't have all these things if, if these men and women were afraid to fail. And um, so fail, you know, um, so they're, they're just, and I used to, being a, an athlete, I was a, a major athlete my whole life, a high level athlete. Did you win or did you lose? Like, didn't people didn't really care about, well, how was your defense? How was this or that? Did you win or did you lose? So failure really has a bad connotation. Um, but now I'm like, bring it. I don't, nothing to me is a failure at all. It's all a life lesson. And I'm learning them faster and faster as you do when you get, or, you know, get to a certain age. Um, but it, yeah, if I could talk to younger people, it, you know, not younger people, anybody, anybody of any age. I mean, I'm jumping off into new stuff. Hey, this is my first real live with with someone that I don't know. Um, so just don't be afraid to fail. Yeah, I was I was nervous before this because I've never done this. Um, but I think your your passion and your desire to spread a message has to be bigger than your fear. So find it's your so passion. funny that you say that, Deborah. There is a guy. I'm not going to mention his name. I'm not going to call him out. <laughs> he has about two million followers, two point five million Instagram followers. Yeah. And this guy before me, he'd never done, like nobody knew his face, nobody yeah. knew who he was, never done a live videos, none of that stuff. Yeah. The other day, I like, I kind of pushed him to do a live session. And after that, it just became little by little. The other day, he was just walking around doing live session with absolutely no points. People were watching it and I was like, you know, does this guy know that I kind of started him off on this path? Like, yes. I'm, I'm the cause of these 50 people being on this live, absolutely doing nothing, just 
purely yep. wasting time just checking out the nature and everything else. I was like, yep. why cause that? But yep. that's the beauty of it. It has nothing to do with your age. I think a lot of our parents and our culture and where we grow up, a lot of times we force our kids to be, to have that mindset that failure is a bad thing. But if you look at it in a logical way, the faster they fail, the sooner they're going to get to success. The faster Because they learn. you mentioned light bulb, you mentioned all, all the de- Exactly. Why don't we just go through the failures faster? But I think is the, is the older generation, or in this specific example, it's the parents that they're, they're shaping the mind of our next generation, the younger ones. If they go through failure and we look at it as a black and white, then yeah, they failed or they right. won. But those failures and those, those failures probably will give them a lot more insight yeah. to what they need to do or what not to do down yeah. the line in life. You know, so to me, it's like, as parents, we should let our children fail more often and be supportive and yeah. love them no matter what. Yes. We should strive for them to win. Like, my daughter better win. Like, when we go to sport, like, yeah. she's 15 months old. She doesn't even know, but we better win. Like, yeah. with any means necessary. Like, if you got to punch people, we got to yeah. attack them. I, we got to win. Yeah. But even if she doesn't win, Then we can come back. Let's go to the house. Let's recoup. Let's go into the locker room. Let's find out what did we do that we got our ass handed to us? Like, yeah. what do we need to do? What did we learn from this? Because I said that on another live, and I, I kind of created that. I said, your W's, your wins give you a lot of ego. Yeah. Your L's, your losses give you a lot of humility and knowledge and wisdom. Yeah, yeah. I was so, talking about that same thing today. Yeah, with, with one of my daughters. I was like... I feel like you need the wins to not feel like a total loser <laughs> because you know, the teams that went through their season, Oh, and 20, and they are like, Ugh. I mean, that sucks. Okay. But I, I think a, a balanced season. Okay. I But Deborah, my- as long as they don't repeat it, it sucks. If they repeat. Oh, and 20. Right, again. Not learning. right. Exactly. As long as they learn and they take something back and they're like, listen, we had the wrong coach. You had the wrong set. Let's just right. not repeat the mistakes. Right. Eliminate that. That to me is a win. Right, right, right. Yeah. You just don't want to have every season like that or every decision. And, and I saw you on a, on a live earlier just talking about, you know, I mean, on a daily basis, even as adults, we make the same mistakes or we, we, and then we have to be like, okay, first of all, I'm big on forgiveness and, and we're, we don't forgive ourselves enough. Um, I'm not talking for bad stuff. I'm just talking for the little stupid stuff we beat ourselves up about. And um, we really have to figure, forgive ourselves, but then, um, but, but learn the lesson. And I, and I feel like the, the older we get, the more aware we get, the more enlightened we get, the faster we learn the lessons. I mean, I've had some really harsh scenarios delivered to me in my, in my life. And life just keeps delivering you the bad ones until you get it and you go, aha. And you change your direction, you know. So. And listen, to me, I don't think anything happens by accident. I think there's a purpose to everything that happens to you. Absolutely. And you just got to look at it that way and just go through all of those challenges. Because when I, I mean, in life right now, it might be called failure. But down the line, it's called experience. Like, yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is, right? So the sooner you get to that phase. But I think... Having a good support system yes. that might come in form of family or a spouse or some center of influence, people like that are in, you, you got to have that. So mm-hmm. when you go through the failures or if you're going through that journey, you at least have that security. And I think that's why faith is so important in entrepreneurship journey, because then you, that's your like, That's, your, that's like the wall that you lean on, that yeah. you know is made out of concrete and it's going to always be there. Like yeah. it's your safe zone that you just lean on for like a minute to catch a breath. So I think it is a scary going through entrepreneurship and that journey, especially a lot of business owners are going through that right now. But having that support system allows you that breathing time for you to gather yourself and come up with innovative ways to yeah. adapt and change 
and make that a good situation, make it a good, I don't know if I said it right, but. No, I, and that just makes, brings me back to the word team. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not playing active sports anymore, but th there are a lot of metaphors and a lot of things that I draw upon and that I'm thinking about right now is, is who I surround myself with. And just, you know, we don't have the choice when we're younger who makes the team, you're put on the team or you're chosen for the team. But now as an entrepreneur, um, you choose your team and you choose your support system and you, it's, it's, it's your responsibility and accountability is huge. You can't be pointing fingers from the top to the bottom. You have to take accountability. Um, the, so Deborah, when am I getting the invitation to the team? team? When am I getting the invitation to the team? Am I getting the invitation? Am I invited? To my team? You absolutely. Yes. And, and we're going to work on your, uh, your, your gym excuses too. <laughs> You know, a lot of people have been working on that for a long time, Deborah. I'm good at <laughs> what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really no, good I'm at it. I'm getting better. I'm getting better at it. Uh, this COVID-19 has given me a little bit more time, so it's cool. Uh, yeah. But I used to walk around the office a, a lot more before because there were people in it. Now it's just me alone by myself, and, yeah. and everybody's quarantining, and everybody's staying at home. So it's different. Listen, I think mental health is way more important than, than going to gym. But still staying healthy is important, especially if you have other people relying on you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So tell me this. Tell me this. What message are you going to spread around the world? What What is your mission? What are we going to do? What, where are we joining? Yeah. Um, I have so many messages. I just feel like I'm just getting started. I feel like my life is just starting. And one of my messages is, okay, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to be 50 in July. And... Um, I want people, no matter You're what. You're lying. There's no way. There's no way. You're <laughs> lying. Okay, but okay, but we'll take it. Okay, cool. No problem. Um, so, and I feel, uh, you know, 49 years young. Like you, I, I believe. Again, everything happens between here, and you can talk yourself into something or out of something. And and I want, I want to talk people into being happy and living your best life from where you are right now, right this, no matter what your circumstance is right now today. Be, you have to be happy with you because you're the only one cradle to grave that is with you, you know, birth to death. It's all you. So my life has changed once I started looking in and taking accountability and stop blaming anybody. You know, there's people that I've removed from my life that didn't need to be there. And that's part of being accountable for who your team is. And, um, I guess just invest in yourself with mentors or, um, you know, creating who you spend your time with books, learning, never stop learning. And, um, you know, they've, they've talked to people on their deathbeds and they say, what do you regret? And very few people say that they regret doing something, but they regret not doing something. So I think right now in this time, it's a huge time to self-reflect and learn and, and think, you know, look around and, and you might have to sprint this, you might lose a job, but it might springboard you into something better than you had. So if you see the vision that you want, just really see um, a big Reiki term is not worrying about the how. You have the desire, the burning desire. You can see the goal and you just keep going and, and you get there. And then you reverse engineer it and you look at how you got there. It, it doesn't matter, you know, that you have all the steps because plans change, you know. Um, I agree with that 100%. But listen, we need to do another video because you touched up on reflecting inside accountability <clears throat> we're also talking about nlp a lot of different things that i think they need more videos i don't think 30 minutes is going to get the job done so we're definitely going to do that so we could explain what that is because i've seen so many people go through this journey of entrepreneurship and owning their own business or wanting to get out and produce more and create more but you need a set of tools to allow you to do that better and faster. So yeah. having that ability to, to know what those tools are and have it at, the, at your disposal, that's very, very, very important also too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm trying to make videos on my page to help people in their now today, not, not like today, right now, in that because that's all we have control over. And um, so Definitely. learning the tools is that, you know. You're doing a fantastic job. I love your page. Keep up the good work. I appreciate you taking this busy time out of your schedule and being with us. Hopefully, we'll get to do more. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm grateful for you asking. Right, you got it. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.